Hello, and welcome back to the You Up podcast. I'm Jordana Abraham. And I am Jared Freed. It is so good to be back here with you, Jordana. How are you? What's going on? I'm I'm good. We're we're doing a little pre pre record. We're getting ahead. Yeah. We're getting ahead to let the listeners behind the curtain. We're not ones to we're not slack. ones to slack. No days off. Listen, there's some people they they have other people host their podcast. So that they don't miss a week. I, I would consider that not my podcast anymore. Um, you know, there's yeah, some people that just too long of best vacation. of episodes. Some people, I mean, it not doesn't us. take a lot for us to, let me just say to people, podcasting isn't exactly the hardest job in the world. I mean, what? like, sorry. <laughs> Thank you for your subscription dollars. Thank you for supporting the sponsors. But, uh, you know, to get ahead for the next week. We make it look easy. I, maybe we do. Maybe we do. Yeah. Other people. There's a lot of work that goes into this. I, I see other podcasts. You're like, uh, you took a week off. What's going on? You like, didn't get, get ahead, a, right? Right. It was hard to like figure out another hour. If you're not in the hospital, you should be recording. That's right. For a month, <laughs> you better be in the hospital, on the deathbed. No, I, I, I say this as a pat on our back. Yeah. But also. A reminder to you, the listeners, how committed we are to this show. We love doing this show. Right. Which is not that hard for us. Not that hard. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a passing thought in our schedule. Um, uh, no, but we want you to share it. We love doing no, it. So we want more people. This show is the highlight people. of my week. I, I love it. it. It truly is. Catching up with you. We. That's we why it. we go so long. It's like, not because we're, we're like, fun. yeah, chilling, exactly. hanging. I got nowhere to be. It's like watching. I used to watch. I used to like that. I used to watch those shows on TLC, like Hoarders or like. <laughs> Or, you know, when the... <laughs> I'm a hoarder! No, it's just more like, you know, like, you're watching someone struggle with something, and you're like, oh, well, things are not that bad for me. Right. Oh, man. <laughs> you, you see the woman who's, like, eating couch cushion? She can't stop herself? <laughs> My dating life is the equivalent of a woman eating couch cushions. She can't... She, she's addicted. Uh, this is... There's a man who dresses up as a baby. He, like, can't... He, uh, the baby guy. I remember those ones. Man. Yeah, there's some weird shit on there. TV... I think we're going to lose some of that. The whole streaming thing. We lose. I think what we lose is like the the mindless nature of uh, channel surfing. Right. Yeah. You, know, you can't really you have discover to, stuff. Right. You opt in. Someone has to tell you again. The again, algorithm has to tell you what you should watch. Right. To sort of push people who listen to this. We want you to share this podcast because we need people to opt in. It's hard to... Just have people kind of find it. To stumble upon things these right. days. The Especially way, a podcast. That Right. It's, you know, not the same way you used to, oh, is that a woman eating a couch? <laughs> that looks intriguing. <laughs> right. I'll, I'll check that I'll out. I'll do a half hour yeah. here. You know, how many food? I mean, I do a thing on the road where I just put on, I have two channels that I will put on on the road. Okay. One ESPN. Just let it play for the day. That is my white noise. Mm -hmm. The secondary option is Food Network. Okay. And I love just having Food Network on. I don't like MasterChef. I think that show stinks. It is not a fun show to watch. It never interests me. I like um, MasterChef Juniors. So you're not alone. So that that's, that's a little like. I might say I like it. I haven't watched it in years. But, but I, I was when I did watch it, it I liked you it. In. Yes. What about it? I just think it's kind of incredible that these like seven-year-olds are like making like, uh, I don't know what the fuck they're making. Like what's a fancy creme brulee thing? yeah like they're making creme brulee and then the judges are like this wasn't sweet enough right or it was too sweet and I'm like this kid is seven like, right well i think it's a little it's hilarious that you're you're intrigued by the nature of these young uh, you know geniuses like getting yeah. getting told that they're not so great <laughs> <laughs> it's like, just kind of like i think the concept is sort of absurd it's like there's people who are it's an like these these kids are like incredibly talented and there's like these adult judges right. who are like ugh, like could you? not soft enough right. Like, <laughs> right these kids should be playing with legos like, right it's like a feat even if a kid played with legos i'd be like that's a smarter the, kid than me right like i, I was eating crayons i never definitely didn't know how to use like a knife to cut like uh <laughs> Could carrots julienne. <laughs> I always thought they should have done a drunk version. I want to be the drunk master chef. Okay, for adults. For adults. <laughs> okay. You get me fucked up. Yeah. Get a bunch of people fucked up, and then you just throw us in our apartments with whatever we got. And then, and then whoever something. makes the best midnight concoction. Snack. What's the worst thing you ever made? 
Well, the worst mistake I ever made was around the time. Remember what what was the the healthy pizza bites that were getting sent around? Snow. Are they still healthy? around? It's called Snow Days. I think those are still around. I've heard of those. Snow Days. It might have sponsored this podcast. They sponsored J Train. Snow Days was a. They were like an adult pizza, pizza bagel. B, no, p. What was it? Pizza bite. But they were like organic or whatever. They sent me a bunch of them, and I came home hammered, put on, a, a, took a pot, Did put you it on the stove. You didn't do preheating? Okay. No. I don't I, see you as a preheat guy. I ain't preheating shit. Okay. I'm a man. <laughs> well, don't I don't have a microwave, famously. Pre preheats for the oven. So I, no, but I didn't do that. I just took How do you pot. not have a microwave if you're like an impulsive eater? That's why I don't have a microwave. Okay. That's the whole point. <laughs> got it, got to it. keep me from, keep the monster at bay. Okay. A compulsive eater. Man, I am fucked up. <laughs> so you're, this is how you <laughs> see me on the know, couch cushion eating. You're calling eating, yourself that. You're compulsive calling, eating <laughs> loser. You're eating your couch <laughs> This is what I have to you? No. Oh, no. Well, this is the team I mean, that's coming out no, this week. Good thing we didn't take this week off. Wildly successful. Good thing we are Nick I'm Vial. Sorry, Couldn't not, get ahead on a I week joke. on his wedding. I joke. You're, you're very... What an asshole. You Couldn't get ahead by a week. Pre, you have pre-cut <laughs> onions. You're doing just fine. That's right. You can pay for that. I'm living big. All right. So I took the Snow Days pizza tortinas, whatever. Put them in the pot, and I put the cover on, and then I went to lay down for a second. Woke up the next day. Oh my god! They were like, they were like briquettes that you would put. I'm surprised in a gr- you didn't burn your apartment down. I I could have died. Like I I the, the oven was the the stove was still on. Still on. Wow. I I go. <laughs> smells weird. In here. <laughs> smells like yeah. It smells. Like, who's burnt toast? I was like, am I having a stroke? And then I go to the kitchen, which is as you know from the apartment tour, five feet from my bed. And the thing is like smoking. Oh my god! And I look imagine in. Imagine if that's what killed you. Died by the hand of my own addictions. Pizza bites. Pizza bites. <laughs> It'd be a funny tale to tell. Right. How Jared died. Doing what he loves most. <laughs> <laughs> so I came to the kitchen, and they were like, they were burnt, like in a way that like I've never seen something burnt before, right. and. The pot needed to be tossed. Like, you couldn't even clean it. Yeah. Um, And I remember telling... I think I posted a video about this, actually. I posted it. It might be on my TikTok if we search late night eating Jared pizza bites. I can't believe you lived to tell the tale. Maybe th- maybe this is death. Maybe I did die. Maybe you this is, six, you know, like six cents. Yeah, maybe I'm not. I'm, I've been talking to no one <laughs> right. this entire time. Pizza bites free. <laughs> It'd be funny, a very like a satire of six cents, and it's and like, that's the one where I you, it you died by the hand. Kill yourself um, <laughs> making pizza bites, and then I, you know, you think you're on a show, but and you're like, why hasn't anyone in, uh, picked this up? <laughs> My stand up. Why, why isn't anyone watching me? It's because yeah. no one can hear you. Oh. I, that's, I mean, that freaks me out a little bit. Um, no, I, I, so that was the worst. Drunk eating experience. Drunk eating experience, almost yeah. death by pizza bite. Um, um, close call. I remember my mom saw it and she was like, Jared, you're going to kill yourself. You're going to get, this is like something someone could bring up in my intervention. Like, hey man, you got to stop drinking. You almost killed remember yourself. the pizza bites thing? Making pizza bites. Yeah. If you tell this in a different tone, it's not as funny a story. This was on Christmas Day in 2021. Christmas Day! Wow. You the, go, the true ghost uh, of Christmas future. <laughs> Someone was opening presents with their kids. That's my age. And you were... And uh, I was like, oh my God, pizza bites almost killed me. Yeah. Death. Talked about my nighttime eating issues in the past. And last night I ordered a pizza and it never came. So I woke up being like, oh, I, I'm so proud of myself. I didn't eat. I mean, proud of myself. It's because the pizza didn't come. But I was like, did I eat anything? And then I was like, (laughs) and I'm sniffing. I'm like, someone's cooking something. And then I walked to my, and the burner was on, and there's pizza bites inside. I show them, right? And stuff. My God! Oh my God! Candace's face just turned. Anna, this looks like dog shit that you see. Right? In your- Don't they look oh like God. briquettes that yeah. would be in a in a in a cold grill? We'll add it to the Instagram too. Yeah. If you, uh... It looks like goose poop. 
<laughs> oh my god, they're perfectly shaped. Out? No, I ate them. <laughs> <laughs> they, then you would really have yeah, a problem. Then I should be on the TLC then, show. Yeah, then you're invited there. How did we get here? Yeah, so. I don't even know. Where are you going on the road? <laughs> <laughs> if you want to watch my uh, falling apart tour, um, I'm going to be in New Orleans. New Orleans, I think there's like six tickets sold. I, I, I'm i gonna on, come New on, New Orleans. Orleans. I, you, you, well, you really everyone's like, come to New Orleans, come to New Orleans. And then you go, and then it's like, hey, are we the three people who asked you to come right. got tickets, and you go, oh, I guess I didn't have vacation. the audience. Right. I'm out of town that week. Otherwise, I'd be there. <laughs> are you gonna come to New Orleans? I, I, I push New Orleans on you. I know. New um, Orleans, tell your friends, bring your family. Um, and I'm gonna be in Dallas. Dallas, that's a big room. Dallas, I can send some people there. Send some people. Um, Nashville. West Hampton Beach. It's happening. I'll be staying with one of the fans in <laughs> her baby crib. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be very funny. Good content. Right. What, what if I burn down her house cooking her food? Yeah. I don't know if you're really like advertising yourself as the best tenant. <laughs> no, I'm not easy to live with. Um, Cleveland, Newark, Atlantic City. Also, jaredfree.com, jaredfree.com, jaredfree.com. Um, anything else going on? Oversharing. Oversharing. Big fan right that. here. Thank you. Thank um, you. I always listen. I love the triggered section. It's Just fun. such a fun game. It's fun. We we have a good time. I like that triggered section. The people that write in haven't realized that they are out of their fucking minds. <laughs> that they're the problem. Right. Like I like the lack of awareness of some of the emailers of like, so <laughs> like like they Can you it, believe it? Can yeah. you and you're like, yeah, I can believe you might be the issue. Right. I the like best that. is when they're the issue. It's like, how triggered can I be? It's like, right. no. <laughs> right. I, the- <laughs> there it is a very wide spectrum of people. Like our I think our listeners, and we do have crossover. I hear people write in and they go, I love you up. I love Oversharing, oversharing and like J Train, right? And, you know, I, I, and the I'm whole here, boat. the whole thing. But it is funny, like our listeners, when the ones that email in, like there is a level of awareness. I feel it that in they're going to get roasted. Then they might get roasted that they like know that like the dating issues aren't just one piece of shit, you know. Like, and sometimes on oversharing, I'm like, I don't think this person listens to you up. Like, I can like te- sense it in the writing. Right. Yeah. There's emails like that. Give me an example next time. I will. Sorry. Text it to me. <laughs> There's just a few that I'm like, does this person not understand that this sh- they needed this show is what I is what I think. Well, that's the goal, right? Mm-hmm. You know, help people, entertain them. We do what we can. That's right. So what are we talking about today? Today we're talking about, you know, it's wedding season. Ooh, it's here again. It's wedding da, 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 season. Da, 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 da. You have any weddings coming up? Or I had my brothers. That's um, over. That's done. <laughs> I don't think I'm like considered a good wedding guest as much as I'm not a good. Really? You know, tenant. I feel like you'd be a great guy to have at the singles table. I could. I. I'll, I'll talk like I could middle like they do on Curb. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm good at like, hey, where are you from? What do you do? So I'm saying. I feel like you'd, you'd liven up the table. Right. If you're a good wedding guest. I, I could. I, I'm. I'm better at the table than I am on the dance floor. I think. Um, you were great at my wedding. People uh, loved thank you. Thank you. I had a great time. Um, still talking about it. It's great. Great wedding. Also, did you know? Hold on. Did you know that like if the wedding's all inclusive, the bride and groom are like getting a free wedding? Yeah, I did know that. I had no. My wedding this, wasn't all inclusive. No, it wasn't. Well, it I wasn't. thought you right away. I was like, you know, the math was in front you of me. I was like, like what, what the fuck? I was part of her grift. <laughs> <laughs> Is this why they have such a mansion now? Yeah, no. you're basically having everyone like um, crowd the... sur- crowdsource your wedding yeah, by, I... by their paying for their. If you like get enough people, they give you the free wedding. The fact that that is a thing. Yeah, well, you know when it, the the bride and groom usually don't advertise that. What right? Yeah. I I don't think I've ever been to an all inclusive wedding, but I can't believe that that is I like mean, they, on the menu of options for weddings. I mean, they have to feed everyone who's paying for a room there anyway. That's sort of like the whole point, right? Well, the, 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 that's mm-hmm. the whole po- right. Yeah. I, I guess the whole point is like, well, I guess the way they would pitch it, the way the bride and groom, right? As you said, not they're not advertising it. They're advertising. It. Take your vacation, do it with us. Take your weekend. But it's yeah. like they're really just like, please pay for our wedding. Basically. And people are giving gifts. I guess. I don't, in lieu never, of gift, you, you gave us a wedding. wedding. Right. right. Why is, uh, is you this paid cra- for, You paid for your own plate. I just, <laughs> Cover I your just plate. think the delusion, I want just to, I want to drink the delusion of brides. 
Like I want to like just sip it. Because I mean, like, and every guy that up. has gotten married. Remember your first special. I, that's right. You do get swept up in it. But every man that I ask my friends, I'm like, they're like, I didn't expect. They're like, they're like, I recognize my wife. But it was just a little askew of what I knew her as. Well, it can make you like a very different version of yourself as someone who's, I considered myself quite chill. Mm -hmm. But then you get into the planning. You can get into the planning and you're like, well, I'm spending this money and like this is my one big day and like right. I do want it the way I want it. Right. No, and yeah. as you should. I, I, you don't know who you are until, you know, until the shit hits the fan, you know? Yeah. It's like, you know. And then once it's over, you go back to your normal self. Right. Like, it's like that, you ever watch that Seinfeld episode where the fire happens at the kid's birthday party? And so. and George throws all the women and children out of the way to get out of the apartment? <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's like the funny, I laugh, that part gets me, and Vince Vaughn, I think, plays the clown. Um, oh, that's funny. But it, he literally, no, it's, no, who's Vince Vaughn's friend? He made Iron Man. John Favreau oh, plays the clown, okay, that's very but funny. you just watch George throw everyone out of the way when he sees the oven, you know, catch a flame, and it's like that's who you are. You know, it's like it, that is your true self. Right. It's called The Fire. Aptly named. It's it's on Netflix. It's episode twenty, early seasons, season five. No, that's not that early. All right. All right. So it's wedding season. Neither of us have any weddings coming up. No weddings for you? No weddings. I'm done with weddings for the foreseeable future. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I guess I'm the next wedding. You're next. <laughs> You're next. Something's All right. coming. Okay. Hey, Jordana and Jared, I was wondering your perspective on being single, being a single all-day wedding guest without a plus one. 12 hours seems like a long time to endure the whole wedding. I don't know what endure. the fuck that, What the fuck is that word? Palave? Palaver? Palaver? Is that a real What does that mean? Palaver? Palaver? <laughs> <laughs> I've never our, heard this word before. Our trash is showing. I've never heard this I've word I've never before. seen that word before in my life. Palaver. Palaver. Palaver means unnecessarily elaborate or complex procedure. What a song. I've never. Dig. Have you heard this word? No, I'm going to start using it. That's great. The wedding palaver. palaver. How would I use it other than a wedding? Um, th the whole bar mitzvah palaver. That's a noun where it's like there's a lot of palaver involved where it's unnecessarily elaborate or complex procedure. An improvised conference between two groups, typically those with it, without a shared language or culture, which Sounds also like she didn't mean that one. works no. for the wedding. Okay. Um, the verb is talk unproductively and at length so people could call our intros. <laughs> If palaver is a very common word and we're just idiots, let us know. All right. Um, the whole wedding palaver without an emotional support I, friend to keep me company. I mean, this person has told you exactly how they feel with that one With sentence. that word, yeah. Yeah. She could have used anything else. Right. Endure. <laughs> I love the people getting married and I'm grateful to be included. Really? No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just anxious about going alone and I think it's unfair that if I had a partner, he would be an automatic plus one, but I can't bring a friend to ease the anxiety. How would you handle the day? I don't drink, and I only know of two people at my table who are very loose acquaintances I have nothing in common with, so I'm dreading the awkwardness and already planning to escape after dinner. Any advice would be greatly appreciated. Love from the sad singles table. This seems like a fun guest. Right. Good attitude. <laughs> Someone I'd want to set up. Right. Love from the Where? sad singles table. Wow. You could not have spun this in an, any more depressing way. Ab I totally agree. Um, the whole palaver. The whole <laughs> it was a true sad palaver. You've been to many weddings alone, correct? <sighs> I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've right. been the, I've been alone at a wedding a lot. Even when I'm sure given plus ones, you I said nah, -uh. I'm yes. out. I don't do that. Um, it takes a very confident person, I think, to say I I'm totally fine with going alone sure yeah i i don't disagree with their anxiety mm -hmm. like they can feel however they want to feel i get it um i i don't think that the idea of like it's unfair like i think not get a plus one right like get out of that mindset i think like i do think there's an element and this isn't betcha's brides but i do think there's an element of like if you're inviting someone who doesn't know anyone at the wedding I do Throw think them a it's bone. nice to get a plus one, even if they wouldn't use it. Bring a friend. Bridal etiquette. I don't want someone's friend at my wedding. I'm, I, that's I the guess. one thing. I think that is rude. That's like, you know, to me, bringing a friend. I don't know. It's like. Find someone to hook up with. Right. right, right. 
Well, like, you know, it's the, it's like the family that the kids bring a friend on vacation. Right. I so just do you guys like, all even ha- like each other? What are you doing? I here? do understand the idea of like this person doesn't know anyone. And it's not like the bride and groom are going to be hanging out with them all night. No. Well, they, if they wanted them to feel comfortable, I can understand why someone wouldn't do it. But I also think it, it's kind of nice to give them the option. I think it's fine. It's nice of them to do it. I understand why they don't. Things cost money. Right. The if you had a plus one, she's even all she's already thinking of why? bringing a friend, a rando. Why is this wedding twelve hours? Is my other question. I well, that's that's them saying that. Well, maybe the the she, morning service and then they're, guess, they're counting everything. If there's like a recep- there's like a church wedding or something. To me, I reach out to the people I'm loosely associated with. Let, let's get ahead. Yeah. Hey, um, I I don't know about you, but I don't know a lot of people at this wedding. I'm a little bit dreading. Like, be all open and honest. Right. I'm a little bit dreading it. Um, just want to like reach out and say hi before the wedding, just so I would love to hang out when we're there. Like yeah. the idea that you don't drink, I know that makes things harder, you know, but like I would just may, maybe make yourself a little bit more excited by reaching out to people that you know are going to be there. I would reach out to the bride and groom. Hey, yeah. I'm excited for the wedding. I'm going to be on my own. So I want to know if like, you know, if you're close enough to be like, hey, who's who else is coming on their own? Or are there any other people that are like any couples that are kind of on the, doing their own thing that might not know many people? I would love to like you know, say hi to them. Right. That might be nice. Would you mind that as a bride? Like getting that call, getting that text? Not at all. I think weddings are also a great place to meet people. The best place. Like if you're solo, especially. Right. And I think like easier said than done, but like going up to someone and just going, Hey, what? And your opening line is, who do you know? You know, what brings you to the wedding? Bride or groom? There you go. What's your connection to the family? You know, and it feels a little bit like you're in the movie wedding crashers, but like, What's nice about a common space like a wedding and the reason people meet at weddings and the reason people make, you know, find a boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever they're looking for at a wedding is you have the worked in conversation. And you have stuff in common. You right. know the same people. Same people. How do you know them is a great way to start. It's the same reason people meet at college and in high school in their hometowns. You know the same street right. signs. You know the same what teachers. Are you in? Right. Oh. It, it's easy to meet at college because oh, what fraternity? What sorority? Are you in? what you know? What's your major? Right. These are all built into the event. So, same a wedding is like getting to go to college for the weekend. Yeah. So think let's a, think of it positively. I think a singles table at a wedding is great, personally. I, know I people agree. have mixed feelings, but I think it's great. I was I, t- I told the story on the podcast about I was at a singles table at a wedding, and. Someone came over and she was hammered and she was like, oh, I guess I'm with the leftovers. Oh, she referred to us as the leftovers. And I remember wow. there was one couple. The wife was like, did she just call us the leftovers? <laughs> like she was so insulted. Were you the table all the way in the back corner? Way back, which is my okay. favorite table. That is the leftover table, though. I'm OK with that. I am leftovers at most of these places. OK, I like I like the the confidence and the ownership of it. Own it. Is it sometimes it usually has like the the extra flower arrangement? It's like a little lower than the rest, like the, the dud one. That's like a little more fucked up. The sad up. one. Yeah. Hey, listen. You'll take sometimes it. Sometimes the little leftovers taste pretty good. That's where you clean up. That's right. right? That's- <laughs> Are you that guy? Let me know the bridesmaids. Send pics. Send- <laughs> I I'm not not that guy. <laughs> This episode is brought to you by Netflix. Hold your carriage horses. Whoa. And tighten those corsets. <gasps> Bridgerton is back. The much awaited third season follows Colin Bridgerton and Penelope Featherington on another scandalous debutante season and in quite the precarious position. Colin has offered Penelope help in finding a marriage match and while penelope has put aside her long unrequited feelings for colin he quickly finds he is not immune to jealousy when their scandalous plan begins producing results all right are you ready to get into our email can't wait i love this friends to lovers so this is start as friends become lovers we'll see what happens some usually there's a bit of drama there uh, as as it works. Okay. Hey, J and J and C. Love it. Look at that, Candace. The uh, JCC. No, the JJC. The JJC. Here we go. Um, love the show. I listen every week. Benefit subscriber too. Thank you. 
I have a friends to lovers story that started off with my not being interested at all and ended with me being completely heartbroken. The best kind of stories. Let's hear it. He at first wanted me to date him and I was like, no, LOL, definitely not. Oy, that is like the most <laughs> horrific response. Hey, want to date? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> definitely not. Can you imagine? You did that? Yeah, I laughed in my boyfriend's face. In your yeah. boyfriend's face. That's, that's Shannon, Currently. our producer. Yeah. <laughs> but the first time he touched my leg, he threw up. So He what? threw up. So Are you guys even... allergic to each other? <laughs> Just two Scorpios. There we go. Okay. Okay, so, LOL, no. LOL, no. Definitely not. But we remi remained friends for years and eventually became super close. We watched each other go through relationships and breakups and always were there to hear the other person uh, out and give advice. When hit COVID hit, we ended up getting together. Well, <laughs> we were stuck together. Right. Uh, and spent every day in quarantine together. After COVID, we emerged as a couple. Stayed <laughs> together for about a year. They got vaccinated. <laughs> we emerged a beautiful couple. Like, <laughs> like a butterfly. Imagine them coming out of like the hole <laughs> right. together. Here's where it gets pretty fucked up. He set his best friend, let's call him Mike, up with a girl. Let's call her Mary. And the four of us hung out a lot. Tragically, a few months after this setup, Mike passed away. Suddenly, everyone was shocked and devastated. But especially my friend turned lover because Mike was like his brother. Especially Mary because she was in love with Mike. Well, their mourning period apparently blossomed into love. And my friend turned lover cheated on me with Mary after a memorial concert in Mike's name. Wow. This should be an episode of Bridgerton. Right. They, they're they still together three years later. Okay. I'm sure Mike is looking down on them from heaven, watching his best friend do his girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, that, Mike's a big fucking weirdo in heaven. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do his girlfriend. This poet. Well, she's projecting a little bit. A little yeah. bit. And I'm still here on Earth wondering how I let this guy I wasn't even interested in eventually cheat on me and break my heart with his gone too soon best friend's girl. Love you guys, a betch who should have known better. Okay. I don't know how you would have known better. Right. I mean, to me, this is not that crazy. I mean, it's crazy, but it's also like I feel like this happens a lot when someone pe people are like mourning someone together. Right. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel like you're like someone fully understands you because they feel the same way. Not that it's okay. It's never okay to cheat on someone. But like I can see it doesn't seem that shocking to me. Shocking is not the word. Right. Like, and especially when you meet someone via friendship. Right. Like they got together by him like. He's the mutual and, person. Yeah. But um, no, no, no. I guess the, the, the friends to lovers. Yeah. That's his seduction method. Stick around. Right. Be around. I, I shoulder to cry on. Right. I get with the person that I, you know, I slither into their heart, so to speak. And so it's not surprising that like the person he moved on to was someone he was getting close with in the same way he got close with the person writing in. Right. So Yeah, I mean it's a tough one. Are you allowed to be mad at the cheating if these two? Yes. Be, okay. You can still be. You can still be mad. Um, I, you can still be still mad, mad, but like, you can, can you be less mad that they're in love and you can Mike looks down on them blowing each other? I think he should from just, heaven. He should have just broken up with her. Right. That's. I mean, yeah, it sounds like, like he did eventually. The order of operations. Right. Is off. I want to know how she found out. Um, yeah. How did the cheating? Yeah, but this is not surprise. If he broke up with her, I don't think he would have done anything wrong. He realized he's he loves the the friend's girlfriend. This isn't. I feel like there's many. This is this, this is a classic tale, right? And I I think the thing I hear from a lot of women, especially, and I think it's not doing any service to anybody. Mm -hmm. My opinion. It's okay to disagree. The idea of like I didn't even like him, and now he's broken my heart. Right. Like women do that all the time, and it's like. Yeah, that's how you get into men generally. Like, well, you know, the, oh, I went on a fifth day, you know, Shannon, you know, I, I said, LOL, no, definitely not. Now we're together. Like the idea that like some guys are a slow burn on you isn't that well, crazy. But then when you go, and I didn't even like him in the first place, he convinced me. It's like, no, like. Well, it protects your ego a little bit. You're kind of like, right. I you're just, this, you're like, you're rejecting me. Like I didn't even like you. 
Like, right. or it's kind of like you, you brought me in here just to, it's like when a kid yells at their parents, like, I wish I were never born. Like, right. it's kind of like you, you brought me into this situation only to like, uh, Fuck with decide me. you didn't want me anymore. Right. I, but it wasn't I just like think it was like, we found each other. I get the, I understand the like, uh, it's a miswritten rationale. narrative. The idea that these men are tr- seducing, tricking you into liking them. Right. It, 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 I think it's like a downer for women. Like you're you're downing your own intellect. Like right. if you want to look at it on like a positive way, it's like, yeah, you came together. You figured out that this is your taste and then it didn't work out. Not the match. But, it, you know, I don't know. It's like I hear this story a lot. Yeah, I understand. I, I agree. It's not doing anyone any favors, but I can understand the feeling of like, oh, I was bamboozled. I wasn't right. even if you're going to like pursue me when I wasn't even interested in you. Like I thought you would at least stick around. Right. <laughs> right. I, I think I've like held back from like going after women for this reason. I'm like, Ugh, I don't want to be blamed for like, you know, getting changing them, my mind, well, changing it's like, I don't their think mind pers- about me. And then like and then I'm like, oh, do I really want to be here? And then I'm like, oh, maybe. I'm, and then you're like, well, like convince them, you know, like, I don't know. I don't think you're like trying. I don't it doesn't seem to me that you're trying to convince many women who are not interested in you to date you. I'm not. But I, well, I, I think there's a fear of like. Do I want to go up that mountain? Mm-hmm. I would say, because am I going to have to deal with like, what if I get up to the top and I realize this isn't the right mountain for me in, and, a, in a very innocent way as right. when it's made to not be innocent. I mean, this happened. He cheated on the other person, changed his mind. She's fine. She's chilling. I think maybe yeah. she's still writing. I mean, she's writing in about it. Years yeah. later, <laughs> so. I think she's fine. Yeah, I think she'll be okay. If you, if you died, would you be okay with your with your best friend dating your girlfriend? Yeah, as long as everyone's happy. Yeah, whatever. Do I get to watch them from heaven? Fuck. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. You're absolutely. Into it. Okay. <laughs> Seems to be what she thinks. I'm trying to think. They're if doing would, in heaven. I've had this conversation with Mike. What, how how you, well not about best friend, but I'm like how long how long would we would we need to wait? How long do you? If one want of him us to died wait? suddenly. How long would he need to wait if you passed? Um, would you like him? You can have it on tape right now. A year. A year? Mm-hmm. I mean, he could have sex within the year, but no relationship. Sex within the year? Yeah. Wow, you're a nice wife. I mean, yeah, I, it's not, as long as it's not an emotional connection. Right, he just needs to get his rocks no, off. I'm not, like an, I'm not a monster. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Release some tension. Do whatever you need to do to get through this horrifying period Now, would you <laughs> in your life. Would you expect the same given so... If you were to answer for Mike, what would you allow yourself? For me? Yeah. I think he wants me to wait longer. Really? Yeah. I think he would say, like, to date someone, I think he would say, like, a um, couple years. couple years. Yeah. Fucking? We haven't discussed that. Okay. <laughs> I, can't, I can't speak for him. Well, you could if yeah. you could. Um, I think he would say same. Same. Same, yeah. This is uh, This is interesting. I, I think yeah. everyone should be. Everyone asked should this, have this conversation. This conversation, right, yeah. right? You should. It should be in the will. It should. Make How it, long it, do make you Make a have? lawyer's life a little bit more exciting. <laughs> <laughs> and now it. let's move on right. to the sex. I, say, I mean, I say a year, but also like, if it, you know, if it, if it happened, I, I just want him to be happy. Could it be a friend of yours? That's Could you tougher. look down from heaven? Watching Mike with one of your friends. That would make me feel way. weird, I think. Yeah, I wouldn't like that. For make a friend. Go- ghost you feel weird. Yeah, it would make ghost, <laughs> ghost me would, have, would do some haunting. Ghost me, would, ghost me would be like, come on. Like, this right. is what, like, uh, it, 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 let's say if, if it was um a few years later, maybe. And it was a friend. Yeah. You'd be okay with it. If, yeah. Longer for the friend than, it, than Rando. For sure. Yeah. Right. And I think that like, Longer for like the friend too. Like I wouldn't want them to feel like he would, they were just waiting for me to die. They moved right. in on him. <laughs> right. Mike's looking pretty good in that black suit. That's what I'm saying. Like I would, that would be my Next concern. That, that would be my concern with the friend. Yeah. You know, it's a little weird. Yeah. I mean, it's weird to this guy. This, this scenario is weird. Like for him to like at the Memorial concert, they hook up. If one of your friends, one of your friends uh, dies. Would you go for the wife? No. Can't Never. even imagine it. Never. C- cannot even. What if they were just dating? To me to date them? Yeah. No. Cannot even. Zero chance. Not even. Like, I can't imagine it. Like, in, in, Really? I really can't. I'm not trying to make myself sound like some sort of hero. I just like. I don't think anyone. 
<laughs> Don't you worry about that. What? <laughs> I'm a couch eating. <laughs> Pizza baby Pizza suicide. Baby. Really good. Guy, I'm yeah. a catch. Yeah. You know how many women emailed to date me on this show? I think you would. <laughs> I think if the stars aligned. I maybe, can't see yeah. it. I don't see them that way. Like, I, I, I consider my friends, spouses, family, even if I can't remember their names from time and time again. Okay. Thanks again to our sponsor, Netflix. <laughs> Dearest gentle readers, will longtime friends Colin Bridgerton and Penelope Featherington defy odds and expectations to find true love this social season? Has Penelope truly pushed aside her feelings for Colin? Will Colin realize his feelings before another suitor takes Penelope's hand? And will Penelope's secret identity as famed gossip writer Lady Whistledown destroy any chance she may have at love? You'll have to watch and see watch part one of bridgerton only on netflix may 16th let's do another email hi j and j hey i've been single for five years <gasps> i'm in my upper 30s <gasps> gay male <gasps> and i've got <laughs> what <laughs> and i've gotten pretty clear about what i want in a long-term partner Rather often, I will come across a great guy and we have fun together and like each other, but don't match up as far as long term is concerned. Mm. Just based on, based on circumstances and needs, not on anything personality or attraction wise. Usually one of us will end it at this point. I've generally been good on this because I don't want to distract from my main and long term goal. And honestly, intimacy sometimes starts to feel kind of weird with someone who isn't my person. Okay. However, lately I've been wondering if this is the right strategy. Am I shortchanging myself from good short-term connections that I that I might need to help me grow? Or just have some fun? Are healthy short-term connections like face uh, friends with benefits even a thing or is it always a waste of time at this stage of my dating life? I did that sort of thing a lot in my 20s but I've been more intentional, too intentional in my 30s. Any thoughts would be greatly appreciated. Well, I can't speak to the gay experience. But from what I've heard, like, this is kind of the hardest part. Right. Is, like, you're just, you know, there's a lot of men being men. Mm -hmm. You know, gay or straight. It's like, like. Looking to hook up. We'll hook up and then yeah. we'll see. We'll right. figure out the rest later. Like, this date is to, is more for just, it could be fucking, it could be something else. But is that something you envy about the gay, the, the gay dating scene? If it was reincarnation. Coming back to New York City as a gay man would be the best. Like more people are just looking to have fun. You're well, saying? you're in a liberal space, mm -hmm. and it's just you know men just it's sex and just honesty and the communication is easy and right. Like look at the communication on this first date. Yeah, that he's having. There's yeah, we're, we're just, just gonna hook physically up. we're cool, but yeah, this ain't it for the long term. So I'm gonna back out, and he's saying. That he's missing out on something because he's not probably he's probably being offered the option of like, well, do you want a second chance dick? You know, like I, I <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just as easy as that to me. Right. Again, I'm saying this as an outsider. I'm sure maybe this might sound offensive. I don't know. I hope not. Right. Um, no, it makes. I mean, it, it makes sense. I'm not sure if that's the experience people have, but it sounds like this in this email. That's kind of what he's saying. Right. To me, this is kind of like the best part of being gay is that there's this openness and you're already open about your sexuality. So that conversation is kind of on the table, but uh, I do understand what he's talking about. He's like, basically like is a situation ship at this age worth any amount of time and energy because it will be take time is time. Energy is energy. We all have a battery right on the upper right side of our phone. Well, what I'm hearing from this is also that he's kind of saying, like, am I cutting things off too quickly? Mm -hmm. Like, could could these people be a good match for me? And I'm just automatically saying they're not for me because of s checklist things. Well, even right. Because he's saying even if we have a a good connection, right? Yeah. I it, It's just based on circumstances and needs, not on anything personality or attraction wise. So he's That's like what I'm saying he's attracted to these people. Right. He likes their personality. Maybe they're like, don't have a job that he likes or, or want a different kind of lifestyle. Well, circumstances and needs are could be a way like a, such a long list of things. Right. Circumstances and needs could be I don't want to be in a committed relationship. Could be. He, he might be hearing that from people and. I think if someone tells you that, 
Well, that's different than like, I want to raise my kids Jewish. Right. And I, <laughs> I think in the gay community, you find way more openness on that. Like, right. oh, I live with my husband and we go out, you know, and we live a little bit more of a poly relationship mm -hmm. where this is fun and games and I get off in certain ways here and then I go home to like my husband. You know, like right. that could be circumstances and needs or I need... I don't know. There could be a million things. I need to not have children. I need to, you know, to live in New York City. I need, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, I think, I think they're it, not all created equal, though. I agree with you. Yeah. Saying like, um, I'm in an open relationship and I'm just looking to have fun is to me a very different uh, thing to avoid than I, you know, I want to live in this part of town or right. I, you know, I'm I'm interested in. This kind of thing. Yeah, it's a choose your battles type of thing. Right. I like, think if he's getting rid of people because they, again, aren't like the exact checklist things on paper, then maybe, yeah, he's selling himself a little short. Or right. could, some of these things could have a potential to turn into something more meaningful if someone's willing to compromise a bit. Right. Yeah, I'm with you. And I think it's hard for us to say without knowing the circumstances. The kinds of things that he's... Right. But I think if you're, policy, if you're sitting here saying to us, I feel kind of weird with someone who isn't my person. So you've told us enough about yourself for us to like say like I'm saying to give you like the idea like you're never going to change someone. If someone on date one is literally looking you in the face being like I'm looking for casual and fun. They ain't coming to Serious Island with you. Right. I would I wouldn't bet a lot of money on that. Right. Very unlikely. Very unlikely. Right. And not 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 impossible. Unlikely. But yes. unlikely. Right. Then so, you're swimming against the tide with that one. Right. So it's like, I think those are the things, you know, when you say I want someone, I, I feel I'm kind of weird with someone who isn't my person. To me, that's like a beautiful thing to know about yourself. Right. Like if again, if he's saying that based on the kinds of things that those per, that person is saying, which are true deal breakers. Mm -hmm. Right. But I, I mean, when you say that, you kind of know the deal breakers. Like, or, but, but some people say, might say, uh, I know this person isn't my person, but maybe they're like not really having an open mind or they're thinking things are deal breakers then they really don't have to be. What do you mean? Let's say they're like, this person, this isn't my person. Cause they have an Android. Wow. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, or, uh, but that's the lifestyle difference. Right. But those things, I think they know. You are know, petty. Right. I, I think you would well, hope you would hope, but I, I think they, there has to be a, a knowledge of like, when you say I feel weird being with someone who's not my person, that means you need more time to figure out if someone's your person. Right. Or, you know, like you said, like maybe, or, you're you right. know, yeah. And then that's your time to step out, which is a nice thing to know. Right. Would you say a situation ship in your late thirties is like a total waste of time? I think it completely depends on um, what you're looking for and like how badly you would like to settle down. I think if you're having a good time and you're in your late thirties and you're having fun and you're not really looking for a relationship, then a situationship is, I actually, I don't like the term situationship because I feel like that sort of implies, I think situationship and friends with benefits feels very different. Situationship to me implies one person kind of like has more power in the relationship or cares more. And it's like an uneven thing. And one person wants more out of the relationship and the other person doesn't. And they're sort of in this like weird toxic cycle. Mm -hmm. Friends with benefits to me, especially I think, in the gay community seems a lot less what's the word like i don't want to say predatory but it seems a lot less more same pay yeah less of a power struggle right friends with, to me friends with benefits is we hook up and if no expectations and no expectations and right. if you cancel on me i can't be really that upset exactly if a friend cancel on me for dinner i'd be like oh what are you doing uh, i don't feel like going out tonight all right right and both people are cool with it that's right. what i take what he's describing and i think that is Totally fine if you're fully aware of that and you're not serious about finding a serious relationship. I think that's totally fine. I think if you're looking for something very serious, this is sort of a detour that's not really going to get you there. I believe in that. I think yeah. if you're looking for a serious relationship, the idea of like going out and meeting someone at a bar and maybe hooking up, it's a social battery. I think, mm -hmm. and especially as you get older, the social battery totally. is... No one has is, time for that anymore. No. Well, my battery is like a iPhone that's eight years old. <laughs> Got to bring out the auxiliary charger with me. You know, like. Right. It, it, like and I would say your battery seems like more able to do this kind of stuff than most people. I And I'm running. I'm starting to. That's starting to wear it on me. Right. Personally. And I and I kind of have noticed is that. Is that a reason that a lot of men get into relationships? They're just like, I don't have the energy to like go do this anymore. Yeah. 
I would say that's, I mean, that's the taxi light thing from Central City. Like, that's the. <laughs> I mean, it sounds very unromantic, well, but like. It's that's fun. why the men it's don't like, write why the you get married. I just didn't feel like going out anymore. Well, you, yeah. I hear that from a lot of men. Yeah. I can't imagine having to go out anymore and just that whole game. And, you know, it's a lot of energy. Yeah. And being single takes a lot of energy. Tons. And that's why people want out. And, you know, that's the fear of like, am I just trying to get out? Right. Or am I really like, well, is, is it two of, people that are, both could be the, true at the same time though. You could be trying to get out and you could meet someone who you think is like great person with good values. Absolutely. But you could be also out there and dating someone who just wants to get out. That's true too. And that's right. scary. Like, are you just trying well, to, I think men are afraid of that with a lot of women are they you're just dating. Do you like me because you would like a boyfriend or a husband? Right. Are you done with this game? Are you exhausted? And right. I could see, I could understand. I'm not, I think the female exhaustion is way different than the male exhaustion on this stuff. Mm -hmm. Like the male exhaustion is like, oh, I got to go to a bar and talk to someone and buy him a drink and have fun and touch their leg. And I got to, you know, maybe leave in the morning. And the female exhaustion is like, these penises just keep getting sent to me. And what the fuck is going <laughs> on? I think the female exhaustion is like, okay, I'm, get getting, like, up and I'm getting deep into this thing. And then like, I feel invested. And then the person just decides they're not interested. Right. That's exhausting. If there's more emotional exhaustion. Yeah, I think that's emotionally exhausting. Right. Yeah. So we but should. But if he's not exhausted, <laughs> keep going. Yeah. Good luck to him in heaven on earth. <laughs> <laughs> Let's play some games. Let's do it. We okay. love a red flag deal breaker. Yes. J&J, &J, he works at a tech company but won't tell you where, but says in the first 10 minutes of the first date that his stock's vested that morning and still splits the check. No to all of that. No to telling me your stock's vested that morning. No to splitting the check. That's so funny. Can you imagine? Won't tell me where? That's the most pressing thing. No like, I don't give a fuck, but now tell me. Right. <laughs> you know, like, it's like, where do you work? Oh, I can't really it's say. It's just like, this sounds like a, the list of like, if I was like, what would a douchey person sit, do on a date? Right. Tell me they work at a tech company, but not tell me where. Right. Talk to me about their stocks and when they're vesting. Split the check after all of that. Right. What? A, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't it's split. like textbook. Stocks vesting is like, that's like a lot of big win day. The I, This is how they operate on everything. The, right. To split the check the day your stocks vest, when do you celebrate? <laughs> like, treat me right like we're out like that's a great thing good for you clap 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 um now let's split it right i think there's nothing more annoying than someone who's bragging about their income and then doesn't pay for the check i mean i who's bragging about their income that's like the crazy thing to me like right, I, there are people who do that which is un which is distasteful right but if you're gonna do that Pick up the tab. Right. Do something. <laughs> do something. Bring your money right. where your mouth is. Right, 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 right. Don't, you know, you just wrote a check you didn't cash. Right. Yeah. It's just so cheesy, too. Yeah. To I talk about. It's also like, yeah, no, it's it's stupid. Deal breaker. Uh, well, this is the thing. I got a message on Instagram, like the question box. And it was like, you know, are men intimidated by women who make a lot of money? And it's like, can we just agree that there's some people who just make a lot of money and are bad at being right. that person? That just kind of suck. Right. <laughs> Like, like that person, just because you're a woman who makes a lot of money doesn't mean you're still a saint on earth. Like right. money is, and that's corrupts like, people. Power I mean, corrupts people, I not mean, just men, women too. If so. you're a woman who's successful and you're having trouble dating and someone you're like, I can't figure it out. A very easy thing to say to that person is like, they must just be intimidated by. Absolutely. Because it's, it's, it's easier than you're kind of annoying. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you're a piece of shit. Yeah. I, I, it's, yeah. You're kind of. You're kind of annoying, and and also you can't say to a woman like you know you're a little aggressive. But people who make a lot of money are generally aggressive yeah, people, and that's true. Are you know so it, it's a hard chicken or egg thing, you know? Like, mm -hmm. and I listen. I am not saying that men aren't intimidated by a woman who's powerful makes a lot of money. I do think that it's overplayed. I agree with that, and I mean I've said this before, but I think a lot of the times the issue is also like. A scarcity thing of like the more su more successful men usually have less of an issue d uh, dating less successful women. Right. I think that more successful women generally want someone as successful or more successful than them or right. a higher level. Not a lot of Mirandas out there. Not a ton. With Steve. Right. 
<laughs> oh, poor Steve. Poor Steve. Who a lot wound of sex up, in the city references. She wound today. up uh, getting at at the end also fucking over. So. Right. Maybe that's why. It's Miranda. She ruined it for all the <laughs> successful women out there. Fuck you, Miranda. <laughs> I actually love Miranda. I'm she, a Miranda fan. She I'm got in, the worst storylines. She did. And the worst haircuts. I, I can't speak to her seasons. haircuts. All right. Longtime listener, big fan. I appreciate all you do. Jumping right in. I need your insight on nighttime farts. Ooh. You've come to the right place. <laughs> uh, Lord Fartington here. <laughs> <laughs> this has happened to me twice now that I know of, and each time I've struggled with how to respond. For context, I'm a 30-year-old straight woman. I've recently been seeing a guy at about a month. He was sleeping over one night, and I farted in my sleep loud enough that I woke myself up. Ooh, he didn't react. The but he... alarm fart. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't react, but he is a very light sleeper and was possibly already awake, so I'm 99% sure he heard it. Uh, here, let me do my impression of him when she farted. You make a fart noise. <laughs> like a gentleman, he pretended to yeah. still be sleeping. I you have to watch as, on YouTube to see that. I acted my as impression. If, I acted as if I was I were still asleep and neither of us mentioned it in the morning. I ultimately pretended it never happened, but I debated making a joke. Like, how'd you sleep? Good, other than when I woke myself up farting. Uh, uh. But would that make it more awkward? Especially in the off chance he hadn't heard it? I think this has only happened once before, several years ago with a different partner, also early into dating. This isn't a frequent occurrence, but I'm sure it won't be the last time. It's also possible it happens all the time and I just don't wake up, and I'm, but I'm not emotionally prepared to face that reality, so let's not go there. So red flag or deal breaker? She occasionally farts in her sleep, and what's the best move next time it happens? Make a joke? Pretend it never happened? Change my name? Move cities and start a new <laughs> life somewhere else? Thank you, a gassy betch. Let me be... The what, what bearer of good news. Okay. Nobody cares if a woman farts. Really? Yeah. Ever? I Talking mean, about sex in the city, there's an episode where Carrie farts in front of Big and then he doesn't call her for three days. Really? Yes. I mean, Big, I mean, all the big storylines. And, and then when he finally does see her, he puts a whoopee cushion under her. Right. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> that, I just think like this whole like women farting thing, like especially in your sleep. Think of a think of how ridiculous a guy would sound if he went to his friends like in the middle of the night she's in her sleep fucking farted. What a piece of shit, right? I mean, maybe like, not, no one maybe would agree would, with you. That. Wouldn't say piece of shit, but you might what be a like disgusting woman. You, you know, might be I don't laughing. Know. I don't know. Like, yeah, I'd laugh at her. I'd laugh. You know, farts are funny. <laughs> okay. If you don't think they're funny, you're a fucking loser. Right, I think. So, so if you were sleeping next to someone or maybe almost asleep and near heard, the fart, <laughs> what would you? What would your reaction be? I'd wake her go. up and start shaking her tummy and going, ooh, a little rumble in the house. <laughs> what would you really do? What would you really Nothing! do? Nothing! I would ignore it. Ignore it? It happens. It? Everyone okay. farts. Would you be upset if someone farted in their sleep next to you? No. Right. But there, I guess there's this feeling of like, I'm a woman. I should be, like, especially in early dating, you're like, I want there to be more mystery. Yeah, but like, here's the thing. She didn't like wake up in the middle of the night and go, hey, wake up, and then fart in his eye. That's <laughs> how so you get pink eye. Right. <laughs> Like, you know, what happened, happened. I wouldn't make a joke of it. Yeah, I, I would just, I'd I move wouldn't on. mention it. If I were, I would You're a human it. who yeah. farts. If, if he's a true gentleman, he won't mention it either. You had hu hummus. Come on. <laughs> Legumes. I don't know. It's, uh, yeah, this is all not in the a land big deal. of like, not right. a big deal to me. Listen. What would I, someone have to do for you to be, for it to be a deal breaker? To be disgusted by yeah. it? Like at Thanksgiving with my family. Accidentally? Hey, everybody, pass the, <laughs> like. <laughs> It would have to be on purpose and done in the wrong way. Okay. Like if like like they're trying like, to be crude. I am someone who farts for sport. I get it. I like a That's good true, fart. Yeah. I'll push one out at the wrong time because I think it's funny. Okay. Well, I, I appreciate that. Okay. So the advice is don't say anything. Who will date me? Let him be a gentleman. <laughs> Sounds like he is if he heard it. Right. He, being a gentleman is like sometimes ignoring something. Right. No, I agree. You know, like, like let like it go. Night, yeah. Let it go, let it go. Your thoughts don't ruin you. Isn't that the? Yeah, play that as motivation whenever right. you you farted. Just play it. Is that play. the Frozen song? Yeah, that is. Let it go. Let, oh, okay, good. I'm yeah, making you're sure. Good. Sound just like her. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> to uh, me, it's a green flag. Green flag Hu shows your humanity. Okay. Like what about what about uh taking a shit? Open that door, sister. With the see, door open? I want to see that. Ah! 
No. Yeah, no. <laughs> oh my God. No. I don't. That stuff doesn't sway me. Okay. And I don't think. I think it's overplayed because it's like women being gross. Like, it just doesn't. I don't know. I've never it's really. It's immature. Yeah. It's immature. Right. Like it's. it's and You're it, okay with a number two. No relationship has ended because of a shit. That's that's the uh, sound bite from this episode. <laughs> Let's do one more. Okay. J and J. All the feathers. Thanks for all you do. You're truly doing the Lord's work, and I say that as a practicing Catholic, so it's validated. Thank you. Finally, the real God acknowledges <laughs> us. Uh, I have a red flag or deal breaker for you that I feel fairly confident you've never heard before. I'm writing this at 4 a.m. on a Saturday morning. I could not sleep after this in my childhood bedroom, which will become relevant to the story, I promise. I'm a 31-year-old female, and I was recently set up with a 37-year-old male living in my hometown. Turns out our parents and aunts, uncles, all grew up together, and we were in each other's weddings. And they all went to medical school together. We were chatting before the date. We realized that we both live in the same neighborhood growing up, which isn't at all shocking because it's the main neighborhood close to the hospital where our parents worked, so it's full of doctors. He's a doctor as well, very attractive, witty, over text, and I knew he came from a great family, so I was very excited to meet him on my next trip trip home when he picked me up for the date at my parents house like it was senior prom he burst out laughing when i got out of the, got out, got in the car and said he'd lived there too as a kid upon further discussion literally mapping out which years we lived there he realized that his parents had sold my parents the house and we both spent our middle school years in the same childhood bedroom just a few years apart uh since he is older not gonna lie it gave me the ick but also probably because he ordered the girliest cocktail ever on the date. I joked that we should probably do 23 and Me before we hook up just to double confirm that we wouldn't accidentally make an Appalachian baby. So tell me, Red Flagger Deal Breaker, you shared a childhood bedroom but years apart. Can't wait to hear your take on this one. Sincerely, not quite incest, but need to digest. I think, you know, you were talking about oversharing and the people who write the trigger to the problem. Right. <laughs> I think she's the problem. Totally agree. The idea to to take you were in the same bedroom as me and turn that as into turn incest. Off. Yeah. Where is the line there? But yeah, I don't even see the You know right. how real estate works? Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a farm that you was passed down through generations. Yeah, this is so weird. I think it would be so fun. It right. would be like such a funny story. It's it, turn on. It'll be turn on. I agree. Yeah. Where'd you keep Talk your about, shit? Yeah. How'd you decorate you have so much it? in common. Right. Yeah. She says he's good looking and witty over text and then he orders a girly drink and they're from the same bed. I don't know. Yeah. She seems like the problem. You're totally. The Nothing wrong with this at all. She's the right. You're living with your parents. Get this guy. He's a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, kind of. Yeah. If you're, this is like, if, if this is Nikki or picky, this is quite picky. Totally picky. Insane. I thought, think that would be so fun. Now I want to, you know, like. I, it's so funny. Like, how did you get to incest? You know, like it doesn't make any. I guess she's saying they have too much in common because they like hung out in the same room as kids. We to should me, do. I like, <laughs> you ever dated someone who went to your high school? It's like right. ugh, disgusting. They went to the same classes as me. <laughs> it's weird. It's not like you, it's not like you like sell the house and someone's in your sheets. Right. <laughs> like, it doesn't make any sense. At makes all. not even the same mattress. It's not even. It, it makes no sense. Um, yeah, she's. You're annoying me. <laughs> Deal breaker to you. Yeah, deal breaker to you. I. What yeah. was the drink? I'm trying to think if there was a drink that would be a red flag. I don't think so. Let's say I go one Shirley Temple, please. Um. Yeah, whatever. Whatever. What, I, yeah, I've what, never. Do what makes you uh, happy. The only drink I would judge someone for ordering on a date is if they were just like, I'll take a shot of tequila. Yeah. You know, like it would be like, <laughs> oh, okay. What the fuck is wrong? Can I just get a whole bottle of Patron? <laughs> Came here to forget. <laughs> I agree. Something that where someone seems like they're trying to get extremely drunk extremely fast would right. be um, a definite red flag. Yeah, this to me, cheer, this guy should run. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We solved dating again. We did it. Proud of us. We'll be back on Sunday with a Sunday special. Boom. <laughs> The You Up Podcast is produced by Candice Maniga and Shannon Sison. Editing by Jorge morales Pico and Shannon Sison. Social media by Candice Maniga. Be sure to follow at u.up.podcast on Instagram. And send us your emails to uup at betches.com. Betches.